Hi, this is Pastor Bill Vigue of Meet of the Word Ministries, and this is number 21 in the series that I've been teaching in regards to feeding your faith in God and what God said, and starving your fears, not living by, by fear, but living by faith. Now, I've been talking about the wars that are, the last three wars that are mentioned in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're told that Jesus gave it to an angel to give it to a human being on the earth by the name of John uh, the Apostle, who was about 90 years old at the time and on the island of Patmos. He receives this vision. And the very first war we mention, John mentions, and he saw a war in heaven. This particular war in heaven has nothing to do with anybody on the earth physically in a corruptible body, in an unresurrected body like I am in right now, having anything to do with that. It'll be war in heaven. This war in heaven will be a casting out of Satan or the devil or the old serpent who accuses the brethren day and night. When he is cast out of heaven and thrown into the earth, he will know that he has but a short time. And then we saw the second war where he will make war against the remnant of the woman's seed or the remnant of Israel's seed for the last three and a half years of what we call the so-called Great Tribulation period. Now, uh, and actually that was Jesus who called it the Great Tribulation period. So at that time, Satan uh, will anoint the, uh, a person on this earth who will be called the Antichrist, not the spirit of Antichrist, but the Antichrist. He will make war upon the, you know, the saints on the earth those that have the commandments of God, that keep them, that do them, and they have the testimony of Jesus. So we know that they are born-again believers, and they have been converted to Jesus Christ as the Messiah. I don't know how scholars come up with the deduction that uh, they are not members of the body of Christ, that we're not, you know, there's no believers here on earth, but anyways, I'm not going to deal with that. That second war, the war by, made by the Antichrist is going to be significant, there's no doubt about it. And he will prevail against those saints and kill those saints at that time. But then we've got a third war, and this third war is the Battle of Armageddon. I want to pick up reading here with um, the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11 it says, And I saw heaven opened, and again heaven opened, and... Behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Not faithful and speculative, but faithful and true. And uh, in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is the final, or the third war in the book of Revelation that is mentioned. And it says, and, and this is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's move over here to chapter 19, verse 14. It says, and, um, he, well, he, he, verse 13 says, He is clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, the blood of the Lamb, or the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and his name is called the Word of God. Again, the Word of God is truth. It's not speculation. We've got to get away from speculation. Speculation will lead us to find fault with other people that are speculating, and you have no solution, no answer to the problem. you just got the same old problem being repeated over and over and over again through centuries that are taking place. So anyways, this one that sits on the horse, the Lord Jesus Christ, it says he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Again, we know that this is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say that uh, he calls the people to the Last Supper, and there's going to be a slaughter that will take place. Again, this slaughter will initiate at the Battle of Armageddon, or the Campaign of Armageddon. And, um, and let's see if we uh, verse 20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, and who wrought miracles before him, 
and which he deceived them, and that he received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image, the image of the Antichrist. These both are cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, that they will be judged even before uh, Jesus returns. And then it says, it goes on to say that Jesus... Um, uh, Jesus will make war with them, meet them at the campaign of Armageddon, and destroy all of the devil, the uh, devil's armies that are going to be gathered together. He's going to actually convince human beings on this earth to gather together against the Lord Jesus Christ and think that he's going to make headway. He's not going to be making much headway at all. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Jesus, in his return, will defeat them. And so you got those three wars that will take place. We do need to look into them. You need to study those things to build your faith in these things. It's not a frightening thing. It's not a scary thing. Its purpose is to set us on a higher mark, to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, or to accomplish what God has predestined for you and I to become conform to the image of the second son, Adam, or the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, conform to the image of his son. That is God's purpose, and that is why Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. He said, I pray for these disciples and all those that are going to come uh, after him uh, in, in, you know, in different generations. He, he said he's going to pray, pray for us that we would be one even as he and his father are one. So God wants unity. He doesn't want us to be selfish. He doesn't want us to be self-centered. He certainly doesn't want us to think that we can solve the problems. Only the return of Jesus Christ will solve the problems. So uh, put that in your faith. Make it part of your life and cast away, silence, starve the fears. Don't be afraid of these events. They're intended to cleanse us purge us, all humanity, all those that believe, just like um, Israel were to be, you know, the Israelites who believed only were to be atoned for, and for their individual sins as well as their national sin. And we've got to do the same thing in our life and lifestyle. All right, you have a wonderful day. God bless you. God help you to understand these things, to prepare you but not to speculate. Don't, don't go down a goose, wild goose path. Stay with the truth. Stay with the one that's faithful and true. In Jesus' name, you have a great day. God bless you.